Nevin, Earl of Warwick. And you join us here at Warwick Castle, Halloween 1470. And these are dark and troubled times. England is at war, but she fights with herself. Brother against brother, father against son. In a wicked civil war that you will call the Wars of the Roses, the battle between the House of York and the House of Lancaster, each trying to put their man on the throne of England. In 1470, Henry VI, the true King of England, sits on the throne. The usurper, Edward, he's on the continent, planning a spring offensive. With that in mind, we must prepare that. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, one of the biggest sea games in the world. The Warwick Castle Trebuchet! Yes. But just over 18 metres tall and 22 tons, it is indeed one of the biggest and most powerful sea games in the world. And, in 1470, the very latest in design. Look, wheels inside the machine. What are they for? Traditionally, you load the trebuchet by putting down the throwing arm and lifting the counterweight using the piece of blood. Horses and oxen. It's always been done that way, and to be honest, it's always worked. But a couple of niggling problems with that system. If you take horses and oxen to war with you, you tie up a percentage of the troops just looking after animals. Men you can't really spare. Also, your enemy will be trying to cut off your supply train. They succeed, hungry soldiers are not reasonably defeated. They will either rise up against you or just disappear. You can't let that happen. So, they end up eating the horses and the oxen, then there's no way to learn the treasure. But somebody thought of another way. A way we could use our soldiers. How? To borrow the technology that made them use the crane. The cranes that helped us build our castles. Genius is simple. Just few twists that men walk inside. So you take two crane wheels and you put them inside the trebuchet. The two wheels are linked by a central axle. Four men put two in each wheel and get them to walk that way. There's a rope attached to a throwing arm, goes down for a pulley, and then up to the central axle. There it is tied up. The man's walking action tightens the rope around the axle, pulling down the arm, and lifting the counter. That huge wooden box that hangs in the middle of the machine, that box in its contents weighs just over five tons. So you have just witnessed four people lift that incredible weight. A feat to engineers. Yes, it is. But it has to be said, walking the trebuchet chain is one of the worst jobs in history. Now the arm is down. It is locked down by a trigger which is pushed through a metal loop. That is the release mode. Below the trigger, the trebuchet master's pushed in a steel pin. So you can't pull the trigger, so you take the pin out. Is also locked on a chain. So the shooting scene will be remove the chain, pull out the pin, and then you can pull that trigger. Right, arm down, counterweight hands at his apex, looks like the machine is ready to go. But of course it isn't, because of the rope, the one that is now tight around the axle. You've got to wind that rope off, and that's what they're doing now. Back into the wheel. Don't walk that way, turn round and go that way. You don't need four winders because it's no longer under pressure. So, one in each wheel will do. The fellow soldier goes round to the front of the machine and goes on to the brake. The brake is an eight foot piece of oak that sits underneath the wheel. Why do we need to do that? Health and safety. But not modern, medieval. This is the most dangerous part of the wind for the winders. Traditionally, if there was an accident on the trebuchet, it tended to be now. It's because of this. When you're walking that way, it's hard work, but it can't run away with you because you're working against the counterweight. This way, the wheels are free wheeling. And what sometimes used to happen is one of the winders would really go for it. Why do you do that? It's human nature. It's a horrible job. 
do horrible jobs, we try to get them out of the way, don't we? Problem is, one winder does that, what happens to the man in the other wing? He doesn't get a choice, he has to keep up, whatever happens. These wheels weigh over a ton each. Momentum takes over, the wheels speed faster and faster, the man coming to run faster still, just to keep up with the wheels. But this is a race you can never win. Lose your footing, try to stop, or just get out. You whipped around the wheel and you come back down on the axle. The end. That is why it is so important to have the man on the brake. If they're going too fast, slow them down. If they're in trouble, stop the wheel and get them out. Now this engine is capable of shooting 150 kilo rocks, well over 300 pounds. But rocks are the trebuchets, why shoot rocks? You shoot rocks to batter down walls. So, you're sieging a castle, you've got 100 trebuchets, you load them all with rocks, you select a section of the wall and you bombard it. You hit it again and again until you blast a hole in it and then you fight your way in. A victory, who's up? But what happens then? You've got a castle with a huge hole in the wall. How do you defend it against a counter attack? No, you need to try to take it if possible with the outer wall intact. How? Throw things over the wall. And the best of those is fire. A castle's made of stone, but the internal buildings are timber. Wooden buildings with thatched roofs. You can set them alight, it won't be long before they're surrendering and you take a castle with its outer wall intact. This afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to give you some idea of what that must have been. We are going to shoot a fireball! 18 kilo rock wrapped in sacking soaked in fuel all day. You can't put it in a sling, it is set in a light. So within the rock is set a ring, a chain to the ring, a rope to the chain, you hook it onto the end of the arm and you launch the entire thing. Comes out of the fuel mixture, onto the trough and then onto the hook. The loader is ordered out of the way, the trebuchet master starts her safety check. Is she happy with the siege engine? Has anybody or anything wandered onto our shooting range? All good? She steps up and takes sole responsibility for this engine of death. She alone will remove the safeties. First, the chain! Then gently pulls the trigger from below the pin below the trigger to make the machine live. Steps down, takes the rope which leads to the trigger and orders the lighting of the projectile, which is add fire. The projectile is torched and begins to burn in the middle of the trebuchet. Now she was holding her. Pull the trigger too soon, it goes out. Too late, and the trebuchet is on fire. So she holds. And she holds. Thank you so much for watching the trebuchet. Thank you.